Hello, we are in chapter 8, and I started chapter 8 video the other day, and I did it for discrete, uh, continuous, or discrete, that wouldn't make sense, I did it for discrete random variables. We looked at the joint probability mass functions for x and y, and today I'm just following up with um, a lecture on joint continuous random variables. So the difference is, the other day we were looking at discrete where the support of x was either finite or something we could list like x equals, you know, 1, 2, 3, you know, maybe y equals 0, 1, 2, but nice supports that we could list out. Um, today we're doing continuous where the random variables are defined over intervals. And I left this to second because I think it, it is the more difficult and um, here, I think the major uh, thing of importance is to try to set up the region in which you're going to be integrating over. If you can set up the region, that's usually the first thing I do. Um, then I know how to figure out my bounds for my double integral. Change color, keep the current, keep the current color, and don't show this message again. Yay! All this time I should have chosen that. So anyway, we're trying to find the probability of x and y over an interval. Okay, so let's go to the formal definition and do a few examples. So definition, um, x and, let x and y be continuous random variables, then f of x, y is the joint probability density function. And notice again I changed the word, it, for discrete it was mass, and now we're going to call them probability density function. But don't worry, again it's just the way we're naming this function. So here, um, f of x, y is defined as um, the probability x and y is in a region is integrating the joint over this region. So r represents the region of interest. And if, if r were just, let's say, a two-dimensional rectangle, like uh, a to b and c to d, then we're ha we have something like uh, maybe this is a and b, and here is c and d, and maybe this rectangle here is our region. And we know that f of x, y has to integrate to 1 over this region. But if I just wanted to find the probability that x is between a and b and y is between c and d, then here is the integral that I want to, I mean, here is the region I want to set up, and you can see my uh, limits of integration match that rectangle. Okay, so again, the facts about this guy, um, you should be pretty used to these. Um, the, joint the joint density function has to be positive everywhere, and it has to integrate to 1 over the region. Um, the probability of x equals a and y equals b is 0. There is no probability at a point, at a straight line. I, I mean, um, it, it's just 0. I, again, I can't have exactly a and b. The only way um, I can define it now is in regions. So all of these are the same. If, if you want to ask the probability a is strict or x is strictly between a and b or c and d, you know it's the same as this. It's the same as this. It's the same as this because I don't have any uh, probability at a point. So similarly to the discrete random variables, the marginal probability density function for f of x, I'm going to integrate over my y's. You can see that right here. And to find f of y, I'm going to integrate over my x's. To find the expected value of x, once I get my marginal for x, it's just f of x times x over this uh, region. And expected of y, a value of y is just f of y times y. So um, once you get your marginals, it's easy to find your expected values. And it still holds true the law of the unconscious statistician. So here I'm saying, let's say you had a, you have your joint density function. But say you are trying to find the expected value of x squared y. Um, so now this would just be the double integral over the appropriate region of f of x y times x squared y dx dy. So I'm just replacing um, the expected value. I'm replacing inside here um, that function. So expected value of x squared is just f of x y times that uh, function in terms of x and y that you're finding the expected value of and then integrate away. So um, I have two examples and for me again the most important thing is drawing that region of interest. So let's let f of x y be a joint probability density function of x and y and it's given over this, uh, here's the joint and it's given over this region. 
So if I can figure out this region, what it looks like, then I know my limits of integration. So if I come down here and draw it, um, I need both x and y to go between 0 and 1. So I know I'm inside this box here. And I'm going to draw the line uh, y equals x. This is the line y equals x, right? And I want all the cases where x is bigger than y, so that's going to be down here. So here's my, that's my region of interest right there. So over here when I'm trying to find k, you can kind of see how I set up my limits of integration. Um, for any x, or x is going from 0 to 1, if I pick any y in there, so let's, um, Let's change colors here. Let's change to uh, a blue. So ch ch choose a y in this interval. Let's say y is here. For any x, if I choose a y, y goes from down here, which is y equals 0, up to this line, which is y equals x. So that's how I'm getting this, these second limits of integration. Okay. So now this just becomes an integration problem. I'm going to integrate first inside with respect to y. And that's what I've done here. I've taken the integral with respect to y. That's how I get y squared over k2, k over 2. I stick in my limits of integration. Uh, and then I have a function in terms of x here. So I integrate it. I get this. Uh, remember what I'm trying to do. If this guy is valid, k has to be a number such that um, the joint density function integrates to 1 over this region. So um, this comes up to be an 8 k, so k has to be um, 8 in order for this guy, to this um, density function here to integrate to 1 over the support. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to, I, I, I might have gone too fast, but again for me, look, look when you get a support for uh, f of x, y, and that, that's your region of interest. This is the first thing. I draw a picture of this guy, and then I can figure out my limits, and then go from there. And uh, once you have that density function, you can ask a lot of other questions. Um, part B, we are finding the marginal. Part C, the expected values. Um, down here are the marginals, right? So to find f of x, I integrate over my y's, and I integrate the joint over my y's. And so, in the end, you better get a function of x. If you have any y's left in it, then you don't have your marginal for x. And also, the support has to be over x's. f of y, I'm going to integrate over my x's. So, again, remember this region. Um, let me see here. Here, it looks like this, right? This was uh, 0, 1, 1. This is y equals x. So, if I pick any x in this region, x goes from y to 1. So I don't want to do that from y to 1. So that's why I'm getting this x equals y to x equals 1 dx. Okay. And at the very end, when you've gotten your function, the y's are valid for y's between 0 and 1. I could, I could have picked any y in this range right here, so y is in between 0 and 1. My bounds here should not have an x in it. It's not conditional. Later in 8.3 we'll do conditionals, and y will be dependent on x, but right now I should just get a function in terms of y and a function up here in terms of x. You can check them to make sure that they're valid um, density functions, and they are. And then a step lower, what I did was do the expected values. But that's easy because you already had f of x and f of y. Here's another problem. Um, again, I, the picture to me is the most important. Let r be a region bounded by y equals x and y equals x squared. Um, find the joint density function. Find the marginals. Find expected values. Um, we're just saying r is a region and a random point is selected from R. So that means um, the distribution I actually have in this is a uniform distribution over that interval. When you say I randomly select a point from this region, you're just saying f of x, y is k. Um, it's uniformly distributed somewhere in there. And again, the, for me, important part here, I'm actually drawing the region for you. Um, here is y equals x. And this is y equals x squared, and it's bounded by those two, and that's why you get this little area of interest in there. So it looks like I'm going to crash, um, but at least I set up the picture, and you can see now where I'm going to have my limits on the integration at down here. And I think I'll quit this before I lose it. Okay, talk to you soon.